This video is about what the rich teach their kids about money. This is not only what the rich teach their kids about money, it's what they absolutely would never do. So there's four things that are absolutely critical to teaching your kids about money. Number one is the language about money and what you say in your household. Number two is you should never pay your kids an allowance. Number three, we're going to talk about the value of tasks and how you're going to create entrepreneurial kids. I call it the 21st century lemonade stand. So number four, we're going to talk about how to spend money and what they should be doing. It's a financial filing cabinet that my daughter made that I'm going to share with you. And fifth, most important, how do you set them up to be millionaires? Are you ready? Get a pen and paper. We got a lot of content. We're going to jam through these five things. So number one, I talk about the language of money. So many families, and I grew up on a farm in Nebraska. You know, you can always blame your parents and sit in that little victim state or just say, you know, they did the best they could. But here's what normally happened when the conversation about money. And in the comments below, I want you to write down some of the things that you were told when you were growing up about money. So I was told you have to work hard, work hard, work hard. Again, farm girl from Nebraska. Um, some of you are probably told, you know, money was doesn't grow on trees. Some of you were told, you know, rich people are bad. And the worst, the worst language that you could ever have that rich people never, ever, ever tell their kids is we can't afford it because you can afford anything you want. You have to have the mindset and the psychology of affording anything you want. Don't ever tell them you, that they can't, you can't afford it, they can't afford it. And don't ever say when you walk into a store, don't ask for anything. Those two things are the most damaging psychological statements you could do to your kids. So if you've said those things, you need to delete them. And here's what's happened. Your kids actually take on the I'm not worth it. That's the translation of don't ask for anything and um, we can't afford it. So they very much personalize that, especially in younger years, like under nine. So if you've done that, you're going to have to do a little rewiring. So how do you do that? Well, you start talking about, well, what can you do? So when somebody, you know, somebody in the family, a kid in the family wants something, you say, great, I love that you want something. What should we do to create more money to pay for it, right? So generative money. You can afford anything and you can have anything. So that is a big difference in language pattern. Now, number two will help you along. My son and I created this great program. It's called Never Pay Your Kids an Allowance. And basically an allowance is synonymous to a paycheck. So you might give them five a month, 10 a month, 20 a month, 50 a month, 10 a week, whatever you've agreed to in your family. Here's the problem with an allowance. It's not associated to anything other than that they exist. So we rewired that. And I started this really young with my son, really young. And here's what we did. We started associating certain tasks with a certain value, right? So let's just use a simple example. Is washing a car, washing dishes, like a higher task, a higher paid task. Well, clearly washing cars are. So I'm gonna back up a minute. Here's what you're gonna do when you never pay your kids an allowance. They're actually gonna negotiate for how much they wanna make a month. It's up to them. If they wanna do a lot of tasks, just like an entrepreneur does a lot of things, they wanna get a lot of business, they can make more money. And if they don't wanna do anything, they don't get a lot of money, but you just don't casually pay them fives or tens or whatever a week or a month. That's just like a paycheck and you're creating your kid to be like an employee thinker. So we don't want any employee thinkers out there. We want to have kids who are entrepreneurial, who can think about things in a very different way. So here's how it goes. You're going to line up a variety of tasks that you're going to generate in a brainstorm with your child, right? What do they want to do? What do you need done? Uh, and by the way, there's just the base skills and the base things that have to get done, like I'm gonna say clean your room because you live here, right? So there are some things just because you live here you have to do. So these are the things up and above that they wanna earn money for. So it could be washing cars, could be taking out trash, could be uh, mowing the lawn, could be pulling weeds, I don't know, whatever you have that you need done around your household. So you make a list of tasks and then you negotiate. Say, well, what's that worth? And they're going to say, I don't know. And now you have this amazing thing. We've had it for years called Google. You're going to go look up what's an, a normal person paid? What's an adult paid for doing that task? What's a housekeeper make? What's a landscaper make? What's somebody mowing lawns make? Like, what is that? And have them actually go out and do the homework. It's really, it's amazing to them. They're going to come back to you and be shocked that like building an Excel spreadsheet or building a PowerPoint or mowing the lawn, like what does that actually, what do those people make? And then you get to negotiate right? The younger they are, the older they are. It's up to you, but I pay, especially my teenage kids, I pay them what an adult would make, especially my kids that are tutors, right? My kids excel at math. And uh, honestly, 
they're kind of better than their teachers sometimes. So if the teacher's making 25, 30, 35 an hour, why shouldn't your kids? So this is teaching the value of tasks. It's the most valuable conversation. And just think, your conversation of we can't afford it and don't ask for anything completely transforms your household to negotiating, having creativity. What's the task? How much money can you make? right? It's fun. So you make a list and then they can come up with how much they want to make a month. So they may want to make 40 a month. They may want to make 50 a month. They may want to make a hundred. I know there were months that my son had like negotiated for four to 500 a month, but there are things that needed done. I had to pay somebody to do them. Might as well pay him. So three of our five things, watch your language around money, or never pay your kids an allowance and the value of tasks will help you start transforming this conversation in your household. Now, I'm gonna do a video every day. I need you to watch. If you're rich, great. I'm gonna give you some distinctions. If you're not, you wanna execute everything we're talking about. So subscribe to my channel, like hit the subscribe button right now. Be here every day. If you're not here every day, take the weekend and binge watch, but catch up because this content is invaluable and I promise you, no one's teaching you. And if you get the naysayers who say, oh my gosh, who's teaching you? Uh, they're probably not wealthy people. You're gonna hit a delete button to those people and just atrophy them. You don't want those people in your life. You're working to change your life and shift your life. Back to our five things right? How to work with your kids. Let's talk about the spending part. As they make this money, right? So say they negotiated for a hundred a month, right? That's $25 a week, $5 a day, right? Whatever that task listing is and what those values of that task. And by the way, I just want to emphasize, do not push time-wise, like let the kids go do the research on what tasks and the value of tasks are. It's the most extraordinary entrepreneurial activity that you'll start grooming them because they're going to start seeing that different tasks are associated to different compensation. And as you're generating them to be an entrepreneur, they're gonna have a very lucrative mindset by the time they are well into their teens. Let's talk about the spending side though. What do they do once they make this say $100 a month? Well, I'm pretty rigorous about you put 50% away because really they're living in your household. They don't have a lot of expenses and they need the pattern of how to invest money. So I set up Roth IRAs. I set up an iFlip software account. I have money put away where they can actually partner with other families and buying some real estate. I mean, I'm very aggressive about how that money gets invested. So 50% is put away. They can pick a charity and 10% or whatever percent you want. I'm just gonna give you the categories. You can pick the percents. So 50% goes for investing, right? That's later. 10% to charity, whatever that is. And then you kind of divide that 40% left, right? So there's kind of the, what do they want? Like big things later. Like I call it the other little vision board. Like what do they want? You know, my daughter just like worked, you know, and uh, we negotiated to pay 50, 50 for a new GoPro. And she wanted like the most expensive one. I said, great. So what are you gonna do to make half of the money? I'll pay half, you pay half. And then part of that money that she put away was contributed to paying her half. And then some of it's just spending money. But again, down to like 20% of it might be spending money, 20% for later purchases, 10% for charity, 50% for investing for later. So you'll come up with your formula that gives you a guide. My daughter and I did a whole tour around the United States called Moms, Daughters, and Money. And she built a beautiful file cabinet on how to structure when you make the money, what do you do with it? The last one, which is like pivotal, how do you make your kids millionaires? So what you do as a parent with your company is you employ your kids. So with your employed kids, they can have a Roth IRA. So from birth, a lot of our clients from birth start putting $500 a month, that's 6,000 a year away. The max you can put into a Roth is 6,000, but just think about it, 6,000 for 20 years, invested at 10, 12, 15%. I mean, we have kids that have Roth accounts well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. We have kids that have Roth accounts that have topped a million because of recovering stock market last year was like a triple year for a lot of clients. You got digital currency that, is on a runaway train. You got some potential real estate. Like I want you to teach these kids, it is not difficult to make your kids millionaires. You just haven't been taught. So that's why you're here. So here's what I wanna give you. I wanna give you our financial filing cabinet. Now I had to kind of negotiate my daughter's like, mom, people spend money and that's part of my money. So I'm gonna give it to you, I'll make it up to her, but I promise you this 21 ways to wealth and a financial filing cabinet for really for you as an adult if you've never done it, but it's really designed for your kids. It will change your life with money. So do not, do not, do not, do not forget 
Language at the kitchen table, negotiate for these tasks and build a never pay your kids an allowance model so they make money every month. They put that money to work and make your kids millionaires.